guys welcome back to our channel today we're going to be making mussels as you can see here two kilo perfect for two persons this one is going to go into the um, healthy recipes playlist which means it's going to be a recipe that's adapted to have um as less calorie as possible for these kind of recipes okay so this one is going to be about 567 calories per person if you do exactly what i'm doing here so really that's not bad if you want to enjoy these um it's going to be a little different i think we shared with you in um in the past how we make mussels here in holland basically uh very easy just boil them with uh chopped vegetables and then some special um herbs that you can get to throw in there um they're always good really yummy really really good they don't need a lot of work so you can just boil them for about five minutes or six minutes with these kind of um specially made for mussels herbs and like i said uh chop some vegetables and throw it in there also and they will absorb all those uh spices so that's the easy way but today we're going to be making it a little bit different uh, by the way if you don't have the mussels um herbs that we have here in Holland. You can just uh, chop a little bit of onion or even better, use onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of salt, pepper, and um, or you can use um, fish broth tablet, throw it in there. So if you don't have these kind of uh, herbs and also throw some thyme in there. That's if you wanna do the classic way of making mussels, just boil them. Again, what I was saying, we're not going to do this the classic way, which we enjoy. Again, I just want to make sure that you guys don't have to go the trouble. If you want to enjoy the mussels, just do it the old way. It tastes perfect. But today we're going to uh, be a little bit. Of, um, we're going to make a little bit of changing to that old recipe. This is going to be a recipe that involves a little bit of tomato sauce and you know a little bit of that, a little bit of that, just. Mm, gooiness around it a little bit of sauce literally and figuratively so we're going to add our sauce onto it uh first of all we're going to be cleaning the mussels uh like thoroughly the, the word i use to i love to use when talking about cleaning so i'm going to fill this up i'm going to fill the sink throw this in there clean them clean them clean them just um shake them a little bit in the water a couple of times keep refreshing the water and then leave them there and then about 30 minutes or something or um 30 minutes maybe i will be doing other stuff so i'll be i think in 30 minutes or so i'll come back to them and then see the ones that are floating the ones that are floating are the ones that you do not want to eat so you have to throw these away the other ones are okay so this is this will be a, ch a moment where you do this checking two times when you wash them, you leave them in the water, the ones that float, throw them away. But also when you're done baking them and you serve them, the ones that are still closed, you have to throw those away too. So let's just clean them now and then continue with the next step. Another something that you might want to uh, like to know is how do you recognize good mussels? Well, um, they should smell like the sea. They should smell like the ocean water, but not necessarily like the fish, if you know what I mean. And like now, they're in the water, I can barely smell anything. So, once you take them out of the packaging and they stink up your kitchen, you know that something is wrong. It's not because they're supposed to smell like that. They don't even supposed to smell like fish, like I said. If they have like a little bit of strong fish odor, you know that it's bad. So, you should have that subtle smell of ocean water. So if you have a big family, you cannot afford to lose a lot of mussels that are floating like this. See, the rest is on the bottom of these keep floating. Uh, so if you have like a big family, then just get about, I don't know, just get about one kilo per person. Okay, at least and then add like a half kilo, just to be sure if you end up having to get rid of, uh, you know, a little bit more than you, you might want or hope for that will start to float so that's what i always do um yeah that's just something that always happens it's just calculate that in that amount so i would say on each kilogram you're going to be losing about four or five 
more or less four or five muscles. Usually, it's not like a thumb rule, but you know, it's something you should expect. So, maybe between three, two, oh, two, three, four, or five max. So this is two kilo, and I have about one, two, three, four floating. Something else, something else that I've got to tell you guys is um, some muscles are open. You know, these are suspicious still. But what you do is you wake them up. And if you don't close, yeah, if they don't close, then you better throw these out. Now, let me show you one that will close. So I just had one. Let me show you one that will close. Let's take a look at this one, for example. Okay, so did, do you see his open mouth? Let's wake him up. wake them up see that one is closing let's let's get another one let's get another one let's see if we get can help another one to go back to sleep how about this one That good example. Ah, I just had one. It just closed. It was so nice to see it. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. Can you guys see it? Can you see it? See that one? See, he closed. See? See the sharp edge? He just closed completely. So, doesn't mean that if they're open, you have to throw them away. To be on the, sh the um, just to be on the safe side, only ones that are, um, uh, the, the shell is damaged or ones that are standing too wide open and they do not wake up okay like this one I mean even if I were to hit him with sledgehammer I don't think this one is going to wake up sadly I think we lost this one so although it is closing a little bit so not really sure anyway so do that test too So one last thing I want to say about this, you guys, is uh, first add them in cold water. Wash them, uh, you know, fresh them up, wash them in cold water. That should also help them to wake up and close. But when you have muscles like this, whatever, no matter what you do, they don't close. And when you see gap this big, I don't think they're going to close. Don't expect them to close from this, this big. Uh, you better throw them out. When you have muscles looking like this, broken, throw them out. See? Throw them out. Uh, sometimes they have little shell on them. Best thing you can do is use one of these knives to take it off. Otherwise, it's gonna fall into your food and it's gonna be a very sandy mess. Okay, so you don't want that either. Sometimes you have shells that are really heavy. Sh um, um, you have muscles that are really heavy. Muscles sh should not like feel really heavy, as if you have a piece of a piece of lead or iron in your hand. Uh, so it should be relatively something that it's okay for a muscle to weigh but if they're heavy then they've probably been eating a lot of sand uh best thing to do is to open it a little bit and see if you can clean it with a little bit of water and see if sand dri drips out um so yeah just a couple of things you should uh be aware of i think i've told you everything by now and another thing is not every muscle that's open is bad i can tell you that from experience so sometimes you just have to risk it if you're gonna, otherwise, if, if you find yourself having to throw almost a half of what you have, uh, something that never happened to me. But like for today, I was just saying to Mike, like for today, I see a lot of muscles that don't really close all the way. Something that I've never seen. We, we, do, we make muscles, I mean, many times throughout the year. So this batch, for some reason, has muscles that tend to stay open a little bit, like this one. Um, so I just, I, I was just counting. It's a lot, it's almost a half. So I'm not gonna throw that out. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just gonna throw out the ones that look really bad. And of course, 
especially today because now I'm making a vlog, we get a batch that is not behaving like I want them to behave. Something always happens. <laughs> Normally, we always have them perfect, all of them closed and all of them perfect, but today, you know. So, but definitely the ones that look like this. Don't take any chances. A little overview, what we're going to be needing, and you will find everything in the description box below. We're going to be needing some extra virgin olive oil, water, bell pepper, tomato, Greek yogurt, tomato puree, mushrooms, um, uh, onion, lemon, basilicum, thyme, uh, rosemary, but I don't have it, so I'm going to use the Italian uh, herbs, uh, chili flakes, oregano, and black pepper. And if you're in Holland, you happen to have the uh, uh, the option to, to add these two, add them also. going to add not, not all of this, just maybe the half of this. Okay, and then of course the mussels. As a start, we see vegetables, so it means we're going to clean and chop vegetables. Yes, this. Clean them and chop them and keep them all separated for now. Okay, so the mushrooms, the tomatoes, the bell pepper, and the onion. Oh yeah, and the basilic uh, basilicum. Chop that also. So what I like to do is take one of these uh, uh, pots, just a big one to have enough space. Uh, of course, by at this time, you've chopped all your vegetables. So, like I said many times in previous videos, once you see an onion in these kind of uh, recipes, you know that you have to chop the onion and start with it. So, we're going to start with frying the onion in the extra um, virgin olive oil. Yeah, fry it a little bit till it becomes um, somewhat soft and then continue with the rest. I promise you it's not going to be a long, um, uh, uh, elaborate recipe. You're gonna be done in a couple of minutes, more or less. Guys, also, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> do the garlic thing. A couple of garlic cloves in there, chop them and fry them with the onion. I must say, although garlic is not really on top, a number one of my list, neither me or Mike, but it does do, it does add a lot of flavor. So, so as as soon as the onion reaches this stage, it's a little bit soft, and you can smell it. It smells really nice. Add everything, everything except the basilicum, the water, the lemon juice. And the, um, I have here vegetable broth, but you can use fish broth, whatever you like, vegetable broth, tablet. So, so these four ingredients, keep them aside for now. So the lemon, the chicken, the vegetable broth tablet, the water, and the basilicum. These four ingredients do not add them. The rest, that means the spices, the tomato puree, and all the vegetables, add them in here and mix them well. What I always like to do is first add the spices, mix them together, tomato puree and all the spices that I left for you in the list below, like this. This should be on low fire at this point. Okay, so when these guys get along, only then we're going to add the tomato, the paprika, and the mushrooms. Also, you can also add a little bit of salt. Although me and Mike really don't leave We've now adapted for years, really for years, we haven't been adding salt either at all. And if and when, it will be a really, really small amount. So now whenever we eat something with salt, it tastes really salty to us. But I can understand if people uh, still love it. I mean, it does, it does add something to the flavor. So 
Just don't do it too much, you guys, because that's one of the things that we do not want to do anymore with these recipes, this journey that we're taking together. And we hope, we hope whoever is watching with us, you know, that small amount that's watching, still, thank you so much. We hope you're still with us and you're doing this and you know you can do it. You can, trust me, me and Mike are losing weight for the first time maybe in 10 years. So let this on low fire, between low and somewhat medium. Yeah, let it bake for a couple of minutes like this. Let them bake together. Let them cook, is that it? I should say, let them cook together. Let them enjoy this sauna together. For a couple of minutes, maybe th three, four minutes. Again, I do love my vegetables to be a little bit soft, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it more like toward the, the last quarter between low and medium, if you know what I mean. To help soften up the vegetables before we continue. Because after that, after that, after this, when the vegetables are a little bit soft to your liking, we're gonna add the water, the lemon juice, just a little bit, not too much. Just maybe the little less than the half, a little less than the half, maybe something like this. Just just take it's stupid, <laughs> it's stupid. The thing that you put on your head when you don't have hair, the toupet, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. But just, just this, just the upper half, okay? Not too much, not really the half. You do not want it to be uh, sour. So, after these are softened up a little bit, we're gonna add the water, half of the vegetable broth tablet, and then a little less than the half of this lemon, and then squeeze the, the, the juice out. So only the juice, add only the juice. Guys, also, if you happen to have coriander powder, add it in there too. Oh, and I just decided not to add, not to add the ready-to-use mussels herb, uh, herbs because I just saw that it has glucose syrup, strobe syrup. No, it's not really syrup, but, you know, something artificial. And I'm really trying to keep all what I'm doing what, uh, lately fresh, so... I'm sure it's not that bad, but most of it is really organic, as I can see, just for that one thing. Anyway, I'm sure it's not bad, but um, I have enough of my own herbs. And this green thingy here is really full. Not this, these are the cats. This is the cat's meow. Yes, ma'am, that's what what just happened? I think I pushed the wrong button. I tend to have that effect on some people. But what I was saying is, yes, ma'am, this is what I was hoping for. You know, wait for the vegetables to give you their riches. Look at that sauce of the tomato and the whole thing. That's what you want to see. Their essence. If you watch The Dark Crystal, I think you will appreciate the joke. We want their essence. So now, we're ready for the next step. Like I said, the water, the lemon juice, and the vegetable, the broth, the tablet. Mmm, it already smells divine, you guys. Okay, so the last step is to add in the mussels, but we're not gonna do it yet. Now, turn the heat all the way down and let it simmer for five or six minutes. Okay, five, six, seven minutes, something like that. On the lowest heat that you have. First wait for it to boil and then do that. So for, wait for it to boil and then do the lowest heat that you have and let it simmer for about five or six minutes. So then add the mussels, 
and just very gently mix them with everything you have in there because there is enough enough uh, juice in there just mix them a little bit make sure that they have the chance to absorb all these herbs that we've been mixing and the vegetables and the whole thing and then it doesn't matter don't don't think that you have to cover them all with water just like this then leave them in uh, we have two kilograms here so it's gonna be about about maybe 13 minutes and they're gonna be mostly steamed ready so instead of boiling the steam will uh, will cook them so make sure that you put the lid on Put the lid on it. Put the lid on it. Again, for about 13 or 14 minutes. Because we have 2 kilograms here. Again, guys, that time goes in after you boil the water again. Because the mussels have been sitting in cold water. So they're going to bring the temperature that we already had in the sauce um, to almost, I'm not going to say minimum, but they're going to they're gonna bring it down. They're going to bring the temperature of the sauce down. So we need to bring the temperature up. Make sure that you see that the sauce is boiling and then turn it all the way down and then let it simmer for about 14 minutes. So I'm halfway, it's been about seven minutes and now you need to shake them a little bit. Yeah, just mix them a little bit. And you can already see that, you know, they're almost as good as done, see? Uh, I was just making sure, just to make sure that they're cooked well, since I have two kilos, uh, kilograms in there. So just to be on the safe side, maybe another six minutes. That will be the total of seven plus six, what, 13 minutes, 14? Okay, so I'm not gonna finish the 14 minutes that I said because that's just a time indication, but as soon as they open up, and you taste one and they're ready then they're ready so i'm gonna keep it at uh what is it about almost nine or ten minutes for the two kilos okay um now we're gonna add a little bit of greek yogurt ten percent i have here for two kilograms i have about 60 65 plus the basilicum that we have here so i'm gonna add the basilicum like that and then the greek yogurt i'm gonna scrap it with a spoon and then mix everything well so we're gonna have them with a fresh bake of baguette but remember guys if you're gonna do like what we do that's gonna add another 250 uh, calories so there they are you guys i hope you like the recipe and i hope i inspired you to go and make mussels for the first time or maybe make them different just remember not to overcook them, otherwise they're gonna be a little bit chewy. We don't want, want that. So what I gave you the no time, chewy. no chewy. Uh, but then of course, sometimes it's very difficult, uh, but just, just you know, trust your own uh, feelings. So when you can taste one and it's done and soft and they're opened up, then that's good. But today was a little bit difficult and a challenge for me because like I said, um, a couple of them were already open. So um, that was not something I can use to indicate whether they're done or not. In that case, just have some and taste it for yourself. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again very, very soon. Have a good day. And thank Bye. you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And we hope to see you again. Bye. Guys, I've got to show you one last thing, how you should eat them. I always eat them with a fork, but Mike is doing it in a much smarter way. He just uses the empty one as um, as a way of getting the meat out of the other one, if you know what I mean. So you use it like this and it works. Very handy and it's a nice way of eating mussels. Well, there it is. If you guys were wondering if they were good, <laughs> Ask the dishes. It's still steaming. See it's that? still steaming. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>